Hello and welcome to Indus News live from Islamabad. I am Anib Hamid with the news of this hour. Let's begin with the top stories first. Three rockets have landed near the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad in a series of attacks on American assets in the region. The Iraqi army says nearby places in Baghdad's heavily fortified Green Zone were struck. This comes after a day marked by rocket and drone attacks against bases hosting U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. AD security forces have killed four suspects in the assassination of President Jovenel Moise at his home. In a televised comment, AD's police chief said two other mercenaries have been detained. Officers are still in combat with some remaining suspects in the nation's capital, Port au Prince. Jacob Zuma, the former president of South Africa, has handed himself over to the police. A police spokesperson confirmed in a statement that Zuma was in custody in compliance with last week's ruling. He begins 15 months in jail for contempt of court. Brazil has reported more than 1,600 COVID-19 deaths and over 54,000 cases in the past 24 hours. Meanwhile, in Pakistan, 24 more people have died, while nearly 1,700 tested positive overnight. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 4 million lives and has infected over 185 million others. Well, these were the top stories news in detail after a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now let's have the news in detail. Three rockets have landed near the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad in a series of attacks on American assets in the region. The Iraqi army says nearby places in Baghdad's heavily fortified green zone were struck. Sirens blared from the embassy compound while the anti-rocket system was also activated. This follows a day marked by rocket and drone attacks against bases hosting U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. The U.S.-led coalition says two personnel were injured after 14 rockets targeted the N. al-Assad airbase in western Iraq. Reportedly, a far-right Iraqi militant group has claimed responsibility for the attack. Now, the U.S. says it expects the seventh round of indirect talks with Iran on reviving the 2050 nuclear deal to take place at the appropriate moment. In a briefing, State Department spokesman Ned Price did not specify any date or time for the next round. Price said Washington looks forward to being engaged in the discussions. The talks adjourned on June 20th as participants returned to their capitals for consultations. Meanwhile, Foreign Ministry spokesperson Saeed Khatib Zadeh says Iran's production of enriched uranium is peaceful. Now, Jacob Zuma, the former president of South Africa, has handed himself over to the police. A police spokesperson confirmed in a statement that Zuma was in custody in compliance with last week's ruling. Zuma begins 15 months in jail for contempt of court. He was admitted to the Est Court Correctional Centre in his home province of KwaZulu Natal. Zuma was sentenced after he failed to attend an inquiry into corruption during his nine years in power. He has been accused of allowing three Indian-born businessmen to plunder state resources and influence government policy. But Zuma and three brothers who fled to Dubai after the former president was ousted deny any wrongdoing. Now, Haiti security forces have killed four suspects in the assassination of President Jovenel Moise at his home. In a televised comment, Haiti's police chief said two other mercenaries have been detained. Yesterday, unidentified gunmen shot dead the president and seriously wounded his wife, Martine Moise. The first lady was flown to Florida for treatment, where she is in a stable but critical condition.
Officers are still in combat with some remaining suspects in the nation's capital, Port au Prince. Police Chief Leon Charles said three policemen who were taken hostage have also been recovered. Haiti's ambassador to Washington, Bochet Admon, said the gunmen were masquerading as U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agents, a move that would likely have helped them gain entry to Moise's guarded residence. Haiti's government has declared a two-week state of emergency to help it hunt down the assassins, whom Edmond described as a group of foreign mercenaries and well-trained killers. Acting Prime Minister Claude Joseph said the gunmen spoke English and Spanish while the majority in Haiti speak French or Haitian Creole. The brazen assassination drew condemnation from the UN Security Council, the US and neighboring Latin American countries. The Dominican Republic has closed its border to neighboring Haiti, where political unrest, gang violence and a growing humanitarian crisis have all plunged the nation deeper into chaos. Now, Pakistan's president, Dr. Arif Alvi, says India is supporting terrorism in Afghanistan and using its soil for hybrid warfare in Pakistan. In a statement, Alvi said India is hatching conspiracies to destabilize Pakistan. He said India is involved in recent terrorist activities in the country, including last month's deadly blast in Lahore. Alvi said India will not succeed in its evil designs as Pakistan's armed forces are fully capable of overcoming security challenges. On Balochistan, he said the government is focusing on the social and economic uplift of the province. The president said the Gavadar port will improve the lives of the people of Balochistan. Tajikistan has sought help from a Russian-led military bloc to deal with security challenges emerging from neighboring Afghanistan. Dushanbe's representative at Collective Security Treaty Organization, Hassan Sulto Navon, issued an appeal to the bloc. He said his country could not handle the instability at its border without external assistance. This comes after hundreds of Afghan troops fled into Tajikistan amid clashes with the Taliban fighters. Tajikistan has also taken in more than a thousand civilian refugees fleeing the violence in Afghanistan's Badakhshan province. Meanwhile, the Taliban claim to have captured another district in the western Herat province. Brazil has reported more than 1,600 COVID-19 deaths and over 54,000 cases in the past 24 hours. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 4 million lives and has infected over 185 million others. More than 4 million people around the world have died of the COVID-19. But just three countries, the United States, Brazil and India, account for more than a third of all these deaths. Despite a decline in overall cases and deaths in the Americas, last week the region accounted for more than half of global coronavirus fatalities. The UN has warned that efforts for pandemic recovery are threatened because women are being excluded from critical decision-making roles. Meanwhile, in the US, New York City threw a ticker tape parade for essential health workers. It means a lot because you know, a lot of times you work and you don't get any thanks, so just being recognized and getting the city to say thank you, it means a whole lot. But really, a lot of us did it not for the thanks, because we wanted to help our communities. Britain has announced to provide genome sequencing support to Brazil, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria and Pakistan to help track new variants. While the number of cases in Germany has ticked up again, after more than two months of steady decline. In Spain, the health minister has warned that young people can develop severe infections as Delta variant tears through unvaccinated groups. We are seeing an important increase in the accumulated incidents, especially in two age groups, 12 to 19 years and 20 to 29 years. With situations linked to end of year trips, to stay indoors without respecting the rules that we all have imposed on ourselves which we also know are those that prevent the spread of the virus. Over in Asia, as a second wave of infection sweeps through Indonesia, large plots are being cleared to make space for burying COVID-19 victims. Japan is also said to declare a state of emergency for Tokyo from July 12th through August 22nd to contain a fresh surge. The city hosts Olympic Games that run from July 23rd to August 8th. Meanwhile, Australia's New South Wales state has reported 
its biggest daily rise in locally acquired cases this year. Meanwhile, in Pakistan, coronavirus has claimed 24 more lives in the last 24 hours. The health ministry says the country's death toll has reached 22,493. It reported nearly 1,700 new infections, taking the caseload to over 967,000. The health ministry says more than 910,000 people have recovered so far from the virus. It says there are over 34,000 active cases in the country, while nearly 2,000 are in critical condition. Now, at least 18 people have been killed after a gunman on motorcycles attacked a village in northeast Nigeria. Officials say a house and two churches were also set on fire. They said the attack took place in Dabna, a village near the administrative area of Hong in the state of Adamawa. Militants have intensified attacks in northeast Nigeria in recent months, claiming the lives of dozens of people and displacing thousands. A fire caused by an explosion on a ship at Dubai's Jabal Ali port has been brought under control. The Dubai media office called the blast a normal accident in a container holding flammable material. In a statement, the media office said there are no casualties or injuries reported. It said the port authorities are taking necessary measures to ensure the normal movement of ships. Meanwhile, Dubai police say the cause of the fire may have been friction or high temperatures. Jabal Ali port is Middle East's largest transshipment hub, which handled 13.5 million containers in 2020. Now, former U.S. President Donald Trump has filed a lawsuit against tech giants Google, Twitter and Facebook. Trump's social accounts were suspended in January over public safety concerns in the wake of the Capitol riots. Trump says he has been wrongfully censored by the companies. The class action lawsuit filed in federal court in Florida also targets the three companies' CEOs. In a news conference, the former president said the case will prove the censorship is unlawful. He added, it is unconstitutional and completely un-American. Earlier, Trump had also claimed that his election defeat was a result of widespread fraud. Still in the U.S., where rescue services combing the rubble of a collapsed Miami building have stopped the search for survivors. In a news conference, Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett said the possibility of someone being alive is near to zero. Crews recovered 18 more bodies on Wednesday in the ruins of the condo complex. A total of 54 bodies have been recovered from the ruins of the Camplain Towers South building so far. Florida officials say there is no longer hope that any of the nearly 100 people missing might be found alive. At this point, we have truly exhausted every option available to us in the search and rescue mission. So today is about beginning the transition to recovery so that we can help to bring closure to the families who've been suffering and waiting for news. In the U.S., the tropical storm Elsa is weakening as it passes over northern Florida. Heavy rains and strong winds triggered by the storm caused flooding in the streets of the Florida Straits. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says Elsa has now been downgraded from a Category 1 hurricane. Some coastal countries reported flooding and downed trees, but authorities did not declare any injuries or major structural damage. About 26,000 customers had lost their power across Florida. Four German tightrope walkers have set a world record by crossing a 2.1 kilometer long and 600 meter high line. The record that they say have set in a U-shaped valley in Swedish Lapland may prove difficult to beat. Ah! Tightrope walking, also known as finabulism, is one of the most extreme of all air sports. In Laporten Valley, the Highliners wore watches with GPS trackers to measure and verify the distance walked between the two anchors. Quirin Hertirich was the first to make it without falling and was followed by his compatriots Lucas Ermler, Ruben Langer and Friday Kuen. Oh. Yeah. 
This is hard because it's really exposed. It's 600 meters high. It's uh, 2,150 meters. And it's really windy here sometimes. So, and just getting everyone here is really far out to get it all organized. It's been a major challenge. La Porten is located just outside Abisko National Park inside the Arctic Circle and is a popular hiking destination. At this time of the year, the sun does not set, giving the highliners plenty of time to fry for the record. It took the team two days of hard work to rig the line, always mindful of the weather. Oh, la, la! Yay! This place, La Puten, is for me an iconic place and a very beautiful landmark of this whole area and you know when I started looking at bigger projects I saw a picture of Laputa and I haven't seen Laputa in decades and just when I saw it I knew it had to be rigged and crossed. Others on the team also tried to break the record and failed but they just wanted to test to walk on the line. Even with the safety harness tethered to the rope, highlining can still be quite dangerous. It is a team sport and a world record is shared among all the members, including the ones rigging the rope. Well, it's time for a short break now. Stay with us. Welcome back now. Asian stock markets have fallen after the Federal Reserve discussed a possible reduction in U.S. economic stimulus. Chinese tech stocks in Hong Kong also came under pressure after regulatory fears resurfaced. Hong Kong's Hang Seng led the losses by slipping more than 2%. Japan's Nikkei 2 to 5 and South Korea's Kospi each dipped close to 1%. In mainland China, the Shanghai Composite dropped over half a percent, while the Shenzhen component sat below the flat line. Over in Australia, the ASX 200 advanced marginally. And now for the weather updates, we have Nyla with us. So we're going to start off with Abu Dhabi, where it is a whopping 44 degrees Celsius. So stay indoors and stay hydrated. If you are working outside, be sure to take all the precautions. Now, meanwhile, in Amsterdam, it is a wonderful 21 degrees Celsius with a great chance of rain. Now, moving on to Ankara, it is nice and pleasant at 29 degrees Celsius, but with rain as well. Now, going under to Auckland, the weather is nice and cloudy at 15 degrees Celsius. Celsius. Coming up to Bangkok, the temperature is high, but due to thunderstorms, they're on the forecast, so make sure you have your umbrella. Now heading to Beijing, be sure to enjoy the warmth at 33 degrees Celsius with some partial sun. If you are traveling to Beirut, be sure to keep some sunscreen because it will be around 30 degrees Celsius and sunny. While in Berlin, Berliners will have to deal with some rain with temperatures at 21 degrees Celsius. Sad to say there is no rain for the people in Cairo in the forecast for today, so try to make most of the sunny weather at 37 degrees Celsius. Honestly, Canabera is where we're all trying to be with the ideal weather at 12 degrees Celsius and partially cloudy, keeping the cold winter sun at bay. Now, if you are traveling to Islamabad, be sure to grab some sunscreen and an umbrella to keep out of the sun's rays because they will be partially harsh at 40 degrees Celsius. As far as Jakarta is concerned, the temperature is 33 degrees Celsius and will be partially sunny as well. Thank you so much. Back to you. Thank you, Naila, for the weather updates. And with that, we come to the end of this news bulletin. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.